operating the DSV machine. Um, if we want to compare one uh, sample to a reference sample, could we, uh, in the one reference can, instead of being empty, replace it with the uh, reference material and then compare the new material to a reference material? Um, theoretically, that's possible. Uh, I think you would get a, um, a curve that would be very difficult to interpret. Uh, what I would recommend would be to run the two samples separately and then compare the curves in that way. Otherwise, you would have to be super careful about making sure your samples are exactly the same mass and the pans are exactly the same mass and that sort of thing. And if there was no difference, you'd just see a straight line. So. Um, okay. Thanks. Go ahead. You're welcome. Okay, great. How about the next question? Hello. Um, you had mentioned melt rheology before. Yes. And uh, I was wondering if that is how you got a melt tension or measured melt tension. I suspect that melt tension is probably measured uh, with a little bit different uh, rheometer. I don't know a lot about the technique, but I think it comes out of um, capillary or extensional rheology. Um, and that's where you're actually measuring um, the sample in the melt state and how well it might be able to form fibers, that kind of thing. It's, are you familiar with the equipment or, or um, I guess, what type of equipment then that is? I, know I, I think, like I said, it's either a capillary or an extensional rheometer um, that would be used for that. But that's about all I can tell you right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. And here's the next question. Yes, hello. Sorry to interrupt again. I had the question regarding electrical and thermal conductivity, and then I forced to step away from my desk and got back just in time to hear someone was trying to figure out who asked the question. I wanted to see if I was perhaps the one. Uh, I, yeah, I think she wanted to see who would ask about thermal conductivity. So. Okay. I didn't catch the name, or? It was Natalie at Honeywell. I didn't catch the last name. Uh, any idea how I contact her? Um, I'll probably get in touch with Elizabeth. I was just going to say, if, you, if you'd like, you can go ahead and email me, and I can email her your contact info. Okay. Uh, what's your email address? My email is just eregan at 4spe.org. 4spe.org. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Okay. And I'll move our next question in. Hey Elizabeth, um, I have two questions here. Uh, coming from your presentation, uh, I get an impression that crystallinity can survive up to the melt temperature, whereas before I came to this presentation, I'd always believed that crystallinity was defined by the glass temperature. So maybe you can help me clarify that. that that's the first question. And then the second question is, relates to the DSC curves. And we have a DSC machine here. And uh, I noticed when we were doing some testing that when you heat up, the curve that you get on the heat up cycle is different to the curve that you get on the cool down cycle. The peaks on heat up uh, were at a different temperature to the peaks on the, on the cool down. And I'm just wondering, was that a feature of our equipment, or is that something to be expected from uh, equipment of this, this type? Um, well, your first question, yes, you are correct. Um, the TD is, is not related to the melt at all. Um, the crystals, we actually, crystallization can occur anywhere between TG and TM. So the crystals that are there will survive to the melt, and you can actually be forming more. In fact, um, it is expected that you get a little bit different trace on your cool down. Um, for one thing, you've erased all your thermal history. Um, so that's the, that's the main thing, but that's not unexpected at all. So Elizabeth, if I was to do repeat cycles of heat up and cool down, the curve should, the peak should overlap once we've erased the, the thermal history. Yes. Well, the, the heat up and the cool down are never going to look the same. If you did, 
if you've erased the history and then you do two heats after that, those two heats should look the same, assuming that you've you know, kept the, all the conditions the same on the cooldown. Okay. But then what about the cooldown curve? And I know they're not the same because they're kind of flipped um mirror image around the X axis, if you like, or vertically. Right. But the temperature of corresponding peaks, should they be equivalent? Uh, usually they're not quite the same. Um, for example, you're going to be approaching crystallization from the opposite direction, and that can have an effect on, on the, the size and kind of crystallites you're forming, that kind of thing. So um, it's, it's not at all expected that those would look the same. It can oh, be great. pretty complicated to interpret. Okay, great. So we don't have an unusual machine then. That's, no, that's not the <laughs> Um, and, and then just to go back to the um, to the first question, then the TG. Yes. Um, what what is what's going on at TG in terms of amorphous and, and crystalline? The TG is only concerned with the amorphous region, and um, it just means that we've gotten to a temperature where there's enough molecular mobility that the chains can start to move around a little bit. Um, if you have a system that's completely amorphous, that means that you're actually going to start flowing once you get above TG. Um, and that could look like melts, could it? Or it could, if in the case of an amorphous polymer, it won't look like that on the DSC, but the actual material, it could look like it's melted. Yes. Okay, so a TG amorphous, the amorphous component is um, is is becoming more mobile. Yes. Thanks, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Okay, great. Do we have any other questions today? If so, please press star 8 on your phone. Okay, we don't appear to have any other questions today, so I'd just like to thank Jennifer, and I'd like to thank everyone again for attending our eLive presentation today. I'll be sending an email with a link to an evaluation form. If you could take a moment to fill out this form, we would greatly appreciate it. We're very interested in your feedback on our EY presentations. Please be sure to include future topics you would like to see presented in this format. For more details, please visit our website, www.4ce.org. Thank you again, and have a great day.